Complex numbers. Understanding the iota or imaginary unit. Now, you have been squaring the numbers for quite a few classes, right? So if you were to find out the square of 1, you get 1 as the value. If you find out the square of 2, you get 4 as the value. If you square 3, you get 9. You can square, keep on going on. If you square minus 2 by 3, you get 4 by 9. Even if you square, let's say, minus 2, you still get 4. If you square minus 3, you get 9. So if you just look at it, the square value of all the numbers that we saw until this point in time were all positive. Right? You must not have come across any number whose square is a negative number. So you will not find something which has a square of minus 4 or minus 9. Right? But this was a common problem which was faced when people came across certain equations. Let's say if you have to find out the value of x squared plus 4 is equal to 0, you get x squared is equal to minus 4. Right? So the square of a variable is minus 4. In order to solve these kinds of situations, there was a mathematician called Euler who introduced the concept of iota or i which is also known as imaginary number. The concept propagated was that iota square or i square is equal to minus 1. So he introduced the concept of iota wherein he said that i square is minus 1. So if I were to look at this equation, right, I can always write this back as x square is equal to minus 1 into 4. Or minus 1 being i square, I can replace this as i square and I can write this as 2 square. Or simply I can write this as 2i whole square. Which gives me the value of x as 2i. Right? So instead of a situation 1 where I could not foreseeably perceive what is the value of x by introducing the concept of iota as equal to minus 1, I have been able to find out the value of this equation as x is equal to 2i where i stands for iota which is nothing but i square is equal to minus 1. Right? Now, if you try to understand how iota works, let us first try to find out some values or some powers of iota and the values of these numbers. Right? So I will uh, try to find out the value of i to the power 0, i to the power 1, i2, i3, okay, uh, i4 then i5 i6 i7 i8 the reason I want to do these for these levels is I want to show you some patterns right now if you talk about i to the power 0 any number raised to the power 0 is that number itself or no it's 1 right anything raised to the power 0. So if you have 8 to the power 0, we know that is 1. If you have even minus 4 to the power upon 3 to the power 0, that is 1. So even iota raised to the power 0 is equal to 1. Then we come to i raised to the power 1. Anything raised to the power 1 is the number itself. Right? Now when we talk about i2, that by the very definition which was propounded by Euler, i2 is equal to minus 1. Right? Now if I talk about i cube, can I write i cube as i square into i? Right? Now i square I know is minus 1 into i or minus i. Right? 
Similarly, I4 can be written as I square times I square. Right? Now I square we know the value is minus 1 into minus 1 or 1. So if I talk about what values I have received until this point in time, I got these five values. Right? Similarly, if you find out the value of I5, that can be written as I4 into I. I4 is what? 1 into I or I. Similarly, I6 can be written as I5 into I, okay, which is I5 is equal to I into I or we can write this as I square which is minus 1 by the definition. I7 can be written as I6 into I or minus 1 into I which is minus I and I8 can be written as I4 into I4 or whatever combination you might take, right? I4 is equal to 1 into 1 is equal to 1. Now if I just plot down these values I, I square, I3, I4, I5, 6, 7, 8, right? What do I get? I get I, this is minus 1, this is minus i, this is 1. i5 is equal to i, i6 is equal to minus 1, i7 is equal to minus i, and i8 is equal to 1. Now if I see, what I find out is that the values of different power of i are actually repeating themselves once I4 is reached.